I've done some experimenting with resin 3D printing over the last year or so using the AlphaWise W10, and I've used that printer in a few projects like the Jabba on Throne diorama and this baby Jabba figure, but I've never quite felt like I'd really mastered using it, and I found a number of things about it to be frustrating. The build area was quite small, and I ran into a lot of bugs with the included software. It's also shockingly noisy in operation. I think the fan on mine might be starting to fail, but it was never quiet even from the very beginning. I was also annoyed at how the machine uses a micro SD card to store its files for printing. This means you need an adapter to use it on your computer, and it's difficult to insert into the machine. In fact, if you're not careful, you can get it between the slot and the case of the machine, potentially losing it inside. So when Longer 3D offered to send me their Orange 30 resin printer for review, I was initially a little skeptical. You see, the AlphaWise W10 is actually just a rebranded Orange 10, so I expected the Orange 30 to share many of the same issues. Still, my number one complaint about the W10 was that it wasn't big enough to print a lot of files that I had without scaling them down, so the Orange 30's bigger build volume was certainly attractive. And at under $300, it sounded like a pretty easy way to get started with resin 3D printing. To be clear, they did send this to me for free, but the opinions in this video are my own. Now before we get started, I should say a few words about resin printing. While traditional FDM 3D printers melt filament and force it through a nozzle to build up the layers of a print line by line, this kind of resin printer has a vat of light-sensitive resin that sits on top of an LCD screen, which can mask the UV light that comes up from below. It builds up a model by selectively exposing parts of the resin to the light and allowing it to harden before going on to the next layer. This allows for very detailed prints, but also brings along some potential headaches, as I will talk about in this video. The Orange 30 is really easy to set up compared to other printers that I've used. You really just have to take all of these individual parts out of the box, and it does come with a lot of little accessories, which is nice. Take them out of the box and then use these acrylic sheets to assemble the cover. Now this is the only part that's a bit of a pain. You have to peel off all of this tape from both sides of all of the sheets and then assemble it using the little plastic guides that they give you. And these sheets are just held together by some clear rubber bands, which frankly seems a little bit janky, but the purpose of the cover is basically to keep ambient UV light from getting into the resin and also to keep any fumes from the resin from getting out. And I think in that sense, it seems to work just fine. I was excited to see that this printer has a full-sized USB port, so you can use a thumb drive to print from. Unfortunately, the one that was included with the printer didn't actually work with the printer, even though I could use it on my computers. But I was able to replace it with one of my own thumb drives, and it's been working fine since then. It's also quite a bit quieter than the W10. Of course, these little improvements won't mean a whole lot if it doesn't print well, so let's go ahead and put it to the test. Obviously, to print something, you're going to need a model first, and there are still a lot of models available for free on sites like Thingiverse and My Mini Factory, but there are also a growing number of artists selling their models on places like My Mini Factory. Some of them send them monthly to backers on Patreon, and this is a good way to get a lot of models for a relatively low price every month. Kickstarter is another popular option. Regardless of what you choose, I think you're gonna to have to resign yourself to paying for models in some way if you wanna get the highest quality ones. In my case, I decided to use some of the monsters from the Creatures of Crom's Fall Kickstarter campaign. This was a campaign by Spare Oom Studio, otherwise known as Levin Archer, a very talented 3D artist who's making models of monsters inspired by the works of H.P. Lovecraft. I backed this project a few months ago, but realized that I wouldn't be able to make use of the files without scaling them down, so this seemed like a perfect test for this printer and its larger print area. In particular, I wanted to print this very large Cthulhu model, so I thought maybe to give you an idea of what it's like to use this printer, I would show you some of the steps involved in printing the parts for this model. Once you've got your model, you need to slice it or prepare it for printing on the printer. The Orange 30 does include longer wear software for slicing models, but I haven't been very impressed with it. First of all, while there's now a Mac version, which you see here, the performance is so terrible as to make it essentially unusable. I'm getting maybe one frame every few seconds just trying to rotate this Dragon model. 
The Windows version is better, but it's missing key functionality, such as the ability to hollow out models. Luckily, none of this really matters, because now you can use the excellent and free Cheetubox software to directly output files that can be printed on the Orange 30. You can see how much better it performs right here. And it has a lot of extra functionality besides. Unfortunately, the included instructions are no help in setting this up, but I will put a link in the video description to a site that helped me figure it out. In the case of our Cthulhu model, we're going to use the wingtips as our example. These have already been pre-supported by the artist, so you really don't have to do anything except put them in the slicer and select your settings. Here are mine if you want to look at them real quick. It seems that by default, the only presets they have are for the longer 3D resins, but you can adjust the settings here, and that's what I've done because I'm not using the longer resin. It didn't come with any, and I didn't have any on hand. So instead, I've been using this Elegoo resin in gray, which should work with the printer no problem if you have the right settings, but Figuring out what the correct settings are turned out to be a little bit more complicated than I had expected because even though most of my models printed just fine, these ones right here, the abdomen part of Cthulhu, kept failing about three quarters of the way up for reasons I couldn't really explain. As it turned out, there were some very fine supports up at the top that were failing because my exposure time was the default of six seconds and it just wasn't long enough. So I changed that to nine and since then I haven't had any problems. And once you're done, you can just click the Save button and save it directly to the USB stick. Once the print is done, you can just unscrew the build platform and remove it from the printer. And there you have your parts still attached to the platform. You're going to need to remove them with some sort of scraper. Thankfully, it's usually very easy to get them off the build platform, as opposed to traditional FDM printers, which can be quite a challenge to get the prints off in some cases. Removing the support material is also usually fairly easy. You can just do it by hand in many cases, although if it's a very complex model, it can be a little challenging. After you've removed the support materials, you still have to rinse off any excess resin from the surface of the part. I'm using isopropyl alcohol for that. I have one that's sort of the initial bath, and that's already gotten quite cloudy. And of course, then I move it over to a relatively fresh batch of alcohol to do the final rinse. But we're still not done. Resin printed parts like these will remain tacky and kind of fragile until they've been cured. So you have to put them in the sun for a while or under a UV lamp, and then you can finally assemble them. So here we have all 25 parts that I printed for this model. The print times ranged from maybe four or five hours for smaller things to maybe 12 hours for larger ones. You may notice that there's a difference in coloration from uh, one part to another here. I actually did these in two batches. I cured them in the sun in two batches. So uh, some of them I left for longer and I think that's what resulted in the change in coloration, although that won't be a problem once they're painted. I have to say I'm really, really impressed with how good these turned out. If you look Closely, you can't see any layer lines or really any indication at all that these have been 3D printed as opposed to basically anything I've ever gotten off of a traditional FDM 3D printer. You can see layer lines if you look very closely at all, and there's none of that here. And there's also relatively little marring from the support materials as well, which we often get on a traditional printer. So that's very impressive indeed. One of the things that attracted me to 3D printing in the first place was the ability to print statues and models and things like this, but I've never really felt like I was getting something that was equivalent to, say, a resin garage kit or a plastic model. But I think these are just as good in quality as some of the vinyl model kits that I've put together. Of course, we have to give a lot of credit to the designer, not just for the sculpting work, but for the work he's put into making these fit together nicely. So you can see they go together, there's relatively little seam there, and what seam there is flows along naturally with the sculpt, so it looks relatively unobtrusive. And I'm thinking that probably this won't require a huge amount of filling with putty later on and that sort of thing. Just to give you a quick idea of how these parts fit together, I'll put some of them together for you right now. Generally speaking, they fit together quite well without needing much in the way of sanding or filing or adjustment. So let's go ahead and glue them with my trusty Bob Smith Industries Instacure glue. 
and see what this model looks like when it's all put together. And here we have the finished model. I'm not sure you can tell how big this really is just from my hand here. So here's a three and three quarter inch Boba Fett action figure to give you something to compare it to. It's really quite large for a 3D printed model like this. Now, obviously I've done much larger things, including life-size models, but there's really no comparison between those and this in terms of the level of detail. You can really see all the fine details of the original 3D model reflected in my prints here. So I'm really blown away by the level of quality that I've been able to get out of this printer. Now you may have noticed that there's some seams left, areas where parts are joined together, and those will have to be filled with a little putty later on before I paint. But it seems relatively minor, and he's designed it in such a way that many of them are covered up like with these decorative pieces, which I have not glued on yet because I think it'll be easier to paint with them off. Same thing with the wings. Those are only on temporarily. I'm really looking forward to painting this up. I had originally planned to paint it for this video, but I realized once I had it printed that it was a lot bigger than I had really imagined, and it's going to be quite a task to paint this well. I also printed this Proto Shoggoth from the same artist, and if anything, this one's even more impressive in terms of the level of detail. It's made up of maybe, oh, 15 or so pieces that were printed separately and then glued together, so all of the little arms and legs and tentacles and even that little clump of tentacles and a hand that's coming out of his mouth, all of that was printed separately so that it came out really clean. You don't have supports marring everything, and I'm just really impressed with this. The final print I'm going to show you from the Creatures of Crom's Fall is this King in Yellow figure. This uh, is super creepy looking and, uh, you know, it's all, like the other ones. It's made up of lots of different pieces like the ribs and the mask and all of the tentacles. They're all separate pieces that you print and then assemble later on. But I think it came out quite well. All of those models that I showed you up until now were pre-made and pre-supported by the artist. So I thought I should show you some things that I had to support myself. Uh, in particular, my son and I have been enjoying making characters on HeroForge.com, which you can use to make your own characters from various kind of role-playing games and things like that. You can choose all kinds of options like the race and body type and outfit and pose and all sorts of things like that. And they will actually print these for you if you want them to, but they'll also sell you for a relatively low price, a uh, printable STL file that I can take and just print on the Orange 30. And I think they came out pretty well. Uh, let me show you what I did here. We both made a design for this video. This is the mage that I made, and this is maybe a little bit of a self-portrait. So if you've been wanting a face reveal, this is as close as you're probably going to get. And then this is the one that my son made. He calls it the Librarian. And here's my mage. I think it printed out quite well overall. I had it sort of laying on its back like this, so you can see there's a little bit of scarring from the support materials that I could probably clean up with some sandpaper if I was going to paint this. The details are a little hard to see, so I decided I'd go ahead and print this as big as I possibly could on the Orange 30, and this is what I got. And I think the quality was really good overall. There's a little bit more cleanup that I could do from the support materials and so forth, but Overall, I was pretty impressed, and it's incredible to think that I was able to both design and print this without ever leaving my home here in quarantine, so, you know, that's something. Uh, the only real quality issue that I've seen, and this is not just on this print, but on a few others, there's this banding issue on sort of smooth surfaces. It doesn't happen every time. It's actually kind of rare, but it does happen sometimes. Here's my son's model again. The Librarian also came out pretty well. This one has more scarring from the support material because of the nature of the model and how many overhangs it has and his arm is you know sort of overhanging the rest of his body so you can't really avoid that to some degree and of course I had to print it large size as well for him and that also came out well although we have some support problems there as well that I could probably clean up or maybe change by printing it in a different orientation. So those are our creations but I also wanted to show you some more things that other designers had made so I decided to print a couple of figures from Artisan Guild. They're one of those artists that have a monthly thing on Patreon, but they also sell individual models. This one is, of course, a wizard with a homunculus there on his leg. You can see the face 
and his face as well, quite clearly, I think. I will say that it can be pretty challenging to know what the best orientation to print a model in is or what the best kind of support material to use is. So that can be something that you need to learn as you go. I'm definitely still in the learning phase, but I'm getting better, I think, and I can see some improvement just compared to the very first things that I printed. This is a Vampire Lord, also from Artisan Guild, and he came out well except for some scarring there on the cape from the support materials. Having printed a few of these tabletop scale miniatures like these, I think they're not quite up to the level of, say, Games Workshop miniatures in terms of uh, level of detail and crispness of the sculpt, but they are very good. This is the Squid Attack model that I printed earlier in the video, and I thought I'd show you this because it's got just a crazy amount of detail for such a small model. You can see all the little suckers on the tentacles there, and if you look uh, closely on the waves, there's a little rowboat there with little details that you could barely make out with the human eye, it seems like. If you look at the uh, Nautilus ship there closely, you can see the rotors on the motor, and you can see all the little rivets on the side of the ship itself. I was impressed by all this detail, so I decided to go smaller and see if it could handle it. And it actually did, no problem. Nothing here failed, everything printed properly. And in fact, if we look on the back, you can still make out the little suckers on the tentacles and the little rowboat there is still, still there and visible. So I was really impressed by this. So of course I had to go smaller. This final one is probably maybe two centimeters tall, I'm guessing. And it actually did all print fine, as far as I can tell. The Tentacles didn't fail and everything is there, although you can't make out any of the fine details anymore. But still, this is super impressive and something that you could never ever do on a traditional FDM printer. In case you couldn't tell, I've been fairly busy printing ever since I got this printer last month. And yeah, I've been, for the most part, extremely pleased with the quality of the prints that I've been getting. And as somebody who's been playing tabletop war games and role-playing games and things like that, almost his entire life. It's kind of amazing to think that we can now just conjure these things basically out of thin air. So this experience has me very enthusiastic about resin printing, and I'd like to find a lot more models to print and do more painting as well. But I would be doing you a disservice if I didn't talk about some of the downsides of resin 3D printing as well. There are some very real concerns related to safety and just sort of convenience to you really need to be careful about how you handle the resin. It can potentially cause allergic reactions and other health problems. You have to wear gloves and eye protection, possibly a mask, depending on how smelly it is. And you need to have a dedicated work area, I think. I have my little table here completely covered in plastic so it can be wiped down. And it's in the basement, so any fumes or whatever are not really getting into the rest of the house. So for these reasons, I don't think resin printing is a good choice for kids. Regular 3D printing with supervision can be done by uh, fairly young children even, but I wouldn't recommend this for anyone, even adults, who are not capable of really being careful with hazardous materials. One other thing is that resin printing can just be kind of a pain sometimes. This is one of those failed prints that I mentioned earlier. And anytime you have a failed print like this, you have to drain the vat of resin. Now, actually, I do have one minor complaint about this machine now that I think about it. This vat is way too hard to get off. The two screws, thumb screws that they have here take forever. It took me 45 seconds to undo two screws. In any case, you want to strain the resin with a paint strainer to make sure you don't have any pieces of hardened resin floating around in there because that can mess up your prints or even worse, mess up the FEP film at the bottom of your vat. And changing that is not easy. I've had to do it with my previous printer, and yeah, it's just a pain. In this case, you can see I've got a big piece of hardened resin there at the bottom. What you want to do in that case generally is to try and push on it from the other side, and it'll usually pop back up. So in conclusion, I think this is actually a pretty good machine, and it's definitely a step up from my previous one, the AlphaWise W10, and presumably the Orange 10 as well. I can't really say that I know enough about all of the other printers that are available on the market to say how this one compares, but I've certainly been very happy with the prints that I've been getting from it. If you are interested in checking it out, I do have a link 
in the description to an Amazon listing for this product. And I also have a coupon you can get in the video description there. This is not an affiliate link as far as I'm aware. It's just uh, a general link that they've given me. So I'm not making any money off of this. I will say that my experiences with this printer have made me a lot more positive toward resin printing in general, and I'm really quite excited about printing some of the designs that I've seen uh, up until now, and I'd really like to use it on future projects for the channel as well. So with that said, thanks very much for watching and sticking through this long review. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it was of some use to some of you.